So it's the 4th of July, and I hope you guys are having an amazing time. I, I am not. I'm studying physics. Not because I don't want to be having an amazing time, but because I have a physics test that's coming up, and I have to do good on it. Now, the thing is, is physics is not complicated, okay? But it seems really, really freaking complicated whenever they're teaching it to you, because they'll take a really simple idea, like Sir Isaac Newton's second law of physics, force equals mass times acceleration, and they'll make it to where it has 30 formulas to figure it out instead of just a simple formula. So I keep getting my ass kicked by all these formulas. And I thought to myself, I was like, damn, Sir Isaac Newton's the guy that pretty much wrote the book on this. He died in 1727. He's been dead for 296 years. How is a dead guy from 296 years ago kicking my ass in physics? So I'm sitting there studying, got the TV on. They're playing the movie Patton, okay? And I hear the character, General Patton, on the movie say, Rommel, you dirty bastard, I read your book, or whatever he said. Now, it's debatable in history whether or not General Patton actually said that quote, but the thought, the idea of that quote still stuck with me. I was like, wait a second. Sir Isaac Newton wrote a book. It's called Principia. It's like, okay. So I look on the internet, and Amazon can have it to me in like two days. Not fast enough. I've got to test before that. So I go down to Barnes & Noble, and guess what? They've got the book. It's Sir Isaac Newton's Principia with an introduction by Kirill Krosnov, who's like a famous physicist from the Ukraine that later moved to the United States. Because it's better to be a physicist in the United States than it is in Ukraine. In this introduction, Kirill Krosnov tells about the life of Sir Isaac Newton. And in that introduction, I learned that Sir Isaac Newton is a little bit of a gangster. Okay? Grew up on a farm. Dad died. Mom and him run the farm. He goes off to school. School and college realize he's freaking smart as hell. So while he's in school, the plague happens. So they have to shut down the university that he's at. He goes back to the farm to write out the plague, okay? While he's at the farm, you know, just bored and passing time, he comes up with calculus, you know, just came to him while he was tilling a field or whatever, okay? The plague's over. They want to make him the headmaster of the farm. The head of the university is like, hell no, comes down, talks to his mom. Be like, look, I know you need a head of the farm, a man of the farm, but this is Isaac Newton and we need him at the university. A farmer is not what he needs to be. So the mom agrees and he goes back to school, finishes his education, smart as hell, joins the Royal Society or Royal Academy or whatever. It's basically a group of smart scientists. And he does the remainder of his work pretty much there. Except while he's there, there's another scientist that he doesn't really like, some guy named Hook. H-O-O-K-E, Hook. Now, Hook sort of kind of understands what Sir Isaac Newton is doing and starts trying to, like, take a little bit of credit because he's got, like, a twinkle in his eye that he understands it. And this really pisses off Sir Isaac Newton. So these two are in, like, a blood feud. They fucking hate each other. Now, as time goes on, Hook, trying to be the better man, he apologizes to Sir Isaac Newton. And Sir Isaac Newton is, like, piss off, okay? Sooner or later, Hook dies. And this is where Sir Isaac Newton's gangster mentality just comes out and shows its face. Because after Hook dies, Sir Isaac Newton becomes head of the Royal Academy or whatever and goes into the archives and gets all of Hook's work and fucking burns it, okay? Destroys it. Not just his work, even his portrait that showed he was a member of the Smart Kids Club burns it too. Basically tries to erase this guy from the annals of academic history. Not like he holds a grudge or anything, okay? It has only recently been discovered that this guy Hook, smart in his own right, made a whole bunch of discoveries. But because Sir Isaac Newton destroyed all the records of his work, other people have gotten credit for rediscovering what Hook did in the first place. So I read the introduction of this book and I sort of feel like I understand Sir Isaac Newton a little bit better. Like I have sort of a glimpse into where he came from and what he did and how he thinks. So I keep reading the rest of the book and I get to where Sir Isaac Newton is explaining all his laws of physics, all his rules, all his definitions and how they all work. And I realize None of this is complicated. It is not as complicated as what my physics teachers are trying to explain to me. Sir Isaac Newton, in utter simplicity, describes how physics works. Like, it's not even complicated whenever it comes from him. So I'm just left wondering, like, one, why in the hell are my physics professors talking all this garbage when Sir Isaac Newton is just like, yeah, it's this simple. It's this. How could you not see it? Okay? But what this sort of highlighted for me something that I had known but hadn't applied, which is if you're getting your ass kicked by somebody, go read their book. If whatever you're doing is kicking your butt, 
go read a book to understand it and you'll do better for it. Because just because I went and read the majority of the book, I am now light years ahead of where I was as just a fucking first year physics student. It's ridiculous how simple it made it. So General Patton read Rommel's book and bested Rommel. And now I have read Sir Isaac Newton's book. And while I'm not gonna best Sir Isaac Newton, I do understand it a lot better. So if you have something that you're trying to do or an opponent that you're trying to go up against, educate yourself about that opponent. Figure out how to tackle it. Any project can be overcome with enough education, enough reading. In any event, I'm going to get the heck out of here and hopefully go pass a physics test. Y'all have a wonderful day. Happy 4th of July, and I'll talk to y'all later.